evening, Cherries fans, and welcome to the last opposition preview show of this year. Of course, we were beaten by Chelsea on Tuesday, 2-0. And of course, before that, Newcastle 1-0 in the Cup. Before I do welcome in my special guest, here is a little bit about our sponsors, Dental on the Banks. To find out what they can do for you, visit dentalonthebanks.co.uk. So, Crystal Palace are the visitors. And, of course, we've got Michael B. Jordan and Bill Foley and many more of our new boards joining us for this match. So, we've got to put on a bit of a performance. But to discuss the Eagles from eagle-eyed football, it is a pleasure to welcome back onto the show after his appearance on the Harry Ridner video, Rich. Good evening, Rich. How are you doing, mate? I'm doing great, doing great. Um, personally, massively nervous about Saturday's game, but apart from that, first and foremost, thank you so much for the invitation to your channel. Not a problem, and a pleasure to have you on. Um, of course, she was involved in the Harry Redknapp show that we did all the way back in August now. That uh, feels yeah. long, long time ago, of course, <laughs> with all the World Cup and everything that's taken place, but... It's back to the league action at Dean Corp. And, um, of course, Crystal Palace, a side that when we had a restart like this before, um, you didn't do too badly against us. Um, if you remember, you are were our first opponent after the COVID um, yeah. pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> what what do remember, you remember um, that day? I believe it was Jordan I who opened the score in. And yep. Luca scored from a free kick, memory serves me right. Um, and it was just, it was massively needed because we, I wouldn't say we were relegation threatened, but we were just kind of like teetering in and around. And it, is, it was a yeah. much needed three points that day because I'd say had we not won that game, you, you get sucked into a, a battle that you don't really want to be in. You know, so uh, I was just happy that day that we got the three points. Of course, we completely, after um, Project Restart, completely capitulated and we know what happened next. But, um, of course, this game is, you know, fairly evenly matched in the table as it stands at the moment. Um, of course, Patrick Vieira in charge at Selhurst Park. Um, amazing player. Absolutely amazing player. Incredible, yeah. Is what do you make of him as a manager though? You know, I'm I'm very happy with him. However, and I'll get to the however in a minute. <laughs> yeah. Um he's come in, obviously. We played a style of football with Roy Hodgson that uh and this is not to discredit him because he did an amazing job stabilizing us, but it just wasn't attacking. <laughs> simply yeah. uh, it was kind of like two banks of four or a bank of four and a five and just kind of like Wolf Zaha please do something brilliant for us sort of thing um, yeah. Vera came in and all of a sudden we're like playing up from the back you know um, I'm playing good football especially last season against really good sides you know Liverpool playing well against Tottenham City 
we, we made Sellers Park as what an absolute fortress last year, you know. Um, this season's been tough for us. Um, our running was not easy as it anyway, but I feel we've come out of it with a decent amount of points considering. However, where we've got like the odd point against the Liverpools and beating teams at West Ham away and stuff, we've then gone and done the Palace thing and then lose to Fulham and Nottingham Forest and stuff, you know. So the, the point yes. tally's kind of evened itself out over the year where we thought, oh, snap, we should really be pushing. And the reason why I said that, however, is I feel like at times PV, he kind of gets really stuck in a certain way. And it's like, like he picks a lineup, it's just like, why has he done that? Like, I can't mm-hmm. record. And I think we've only played the same 11, starting 11, two consecutive games. And that is no way going to lead to any sort of continuity or rhythm or success, in my personal opinion. So he's done an amazing job for us. We just need to find out that we're being more stable. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And of course, we are the third promoted side um, that you're going to be coming up against. Um, you've been beaten by Forrest, been beaten by Fulham. What's been the issue against teams that have come up from the Championship? Us. We've been the issue. Um, I feel like, as a, and this could go across both management and players, when it's a game that we're not supposed to win, we're up for it. You know, and we, we, we play very well. Um, we've obviously taken the promoted side slightly. Uh, let's look back at the Forest game. We missed a penalty right before half-time. Now, had we'd scored that, it could have been, we may have been able to run away with it. And I'm not saying that we played well at all, but goals change games. You know, we missed the penalty. Forrest had their tails up. And to be fair, deservedly got the got the win. Against Fulham at Boxing Day, oh my goodness, we were just terrible from the job. Once again, I think the starting lineup wasn't right, personally. But fair play to Fulham. They did their homework. They nullified our fullbacks. Um, so there wasn't really an outlet to pass out. They made sure Anderson didn't get a the ball much, so we had to rely on Tompkins, you know, and um, yeah, we deservedly lost. Obviously, granted, we had men set, two men sent off that game as well, but if you're talking about balance of play, if you don't have any shots on target and against Fulham and against Forrest, deserve to lose, personally. So, yeah. And Hopefully yeah, we can got... take our anger at you on you, look. <laughs> You have got some real quality, though. Um, of course, you've got Wilfred Sahar. You've got Michael Alise, um, quality player, somebody who I've got a lot of time for. Um, and, of course, one player that I wanted to sign, and I've said it time and time and time again on these shows, Eris Beshi Ezi. Um, I think he's a quality player yeah, and he's still good. a very, very young man. He's an incredible player, absolutely incredible. Um, I feel like he he hit a purple patch um, just before the the World Cup break, um, considering he was out pretty much most of last season with an Achilles injury and stuff. So it, it's been tough for him and such. Um, the thing with Eze though is, I feel he just needs to be able to just roam in the ten position and stuff. Yeah. Had him against Fulham in the on the left hand side, it just didn't work. Um, but in saying that, our midfield balance anyway has been an issue. It's been a mm-hmm. massive issue. We've got Chet Decore, who has been incredible for us. Um, absolute still to get him from London for like was it 18 million, rising to like 22, 23. Yep. Absolute still. He's been brilliant. But I feel because of like we had Jeffrey Schlupp, and if he plays, if Schlupp plays well, the whole team plays well. Mm-hmm. But Schlupp will play well one game. And have three or four stinkers, and then when he doesn't have a good game, it is obvious, it is blatantly <laughs> obvious, and there's a massive hole in our midfield, you know. And then that affects obviously our attacking players like Eze, they can't get into the game, Elise can't get into the game, and such. So, um, yeah, Eze, unbelievable talent. Um, I'm hopeful that he can go back into 10. If we see him on the left hand side, you will be laughing your heads off. Um, <laughs> So hopefully he goes back into his turn and just does what he does best, just glides past players, you know, yeah. and it's just a very creative player. Of course, one thing you mentioned there was the midfield and, you know, how it's a bit imbalanced. Midfield is probably our strongest area. 
Um, of course, we've got Lerma, Billin, Lewis Cook. We've also got some people in reserve as well. Um, somebody like Ben Pearson, if he's needed. Um, McCondes, you know, again, a strong player. But with regards to our midfield, you know, are you concerned that you may, might be a little bit out for? You know what? If it's a case where, and this is where I'm going to go into the players, if we compete, yeah. we can match anyone. Like, I've seen enough of us under the era to say that we can match anyone, you know, as yeah. long as we compete. But the issue is, like I said, it's a mentality thing where we will compete against the big sides and feel like we don't need to compete against everyone else, you know? Um, your midfield is strong. Um, you mentioned uh, Lerma. He's always been a pain in our backside um but also that billing um he's just uh, how can i describe him he's like a loftus cheek like, like that sort of build and he's very technically gifted on the ball and he can drive with the ball and stuff and he's yeah. got an eye for goal <laughs> he's actually got an eye for goal as well so um and this is where i feel for us obviously lerma will sit back and he'll be the base we need to keep billing as, as quiet as possible yeah. And that's why I say if it's Schlapp, he has to he has to have a blinder. You know, I would prefer Hughes or or even Luca to to do a double pivot and just someone just to just kick ankles. You know, we we need a player, and I think I was saying this after the Fulham game. I feel we're just too nice as a club that we don't have a player who will just be like just nippy and bite at you and and and. I'm not, I'm not advocating diving, but you know where you just buy, free, you win free kicks. Yeah. Like, like like Mitrovic, I don't like him, he's a cheat, but he, that type of player, like you, you just need in your club just to eat up the clock and, you know, stop the flow of games and stuff. And we need to be nastier, I think, personally. I think we're just too Rich, nasty. you got Vieira as your manager. This is why I'm so surprised. Um, <laughs> this is why I'm so surprised. Um, but to be fair, um, in Vieira's defence, I think the board hasn't helped. We've not yeah. we've not recruited well at all. Like we knew that after the summer window, we're like, we've left us off really light here, you know. And it's yeah. starting to show in, in areas. Um, so yeah, like, fingers crossed, fingers crossed. We just could this. I think this is the, the after this game is the January transfer window. So if we can get a it result is. here, and hopefully, if, oh, we are, just hope we have a good window, and then kick on from there because our upcoming fixtures after you yeah <laughs> they're tough they're tough but you know when I think back to Vieira and what he used to do with Roy Keane and you know the battles he had and let's be honest he gave as good as he got from Roy Keane and that's saying something because Roy Keane was a bit of a nutter when he was yeah. playing <laughs> but you'd expect him to actually instill that but I can see where you're coming from that it's, it seemed to be too nice but of course there was the two sending offs in the last game against Fulham. What, what, what yeah. did you make of them? Did you feel that they were harsh or...? So, Tarek Mitchell's one. And you know what? It's, it's funny because someone mentioned that to me on uh, on Twitter. I was like, oh, we got two red cards though. What do you mean we're two nuts? I was like, well, Mitchell's one was a stupid challenge. It wasn't that we were... <laughs> he's still too nice as a player. And yeah. Tompkins <laughs> sent off his, It was a ridiculous decision from the ref. Mitrovic literally yeah. dived. Um... However, once again, you can look at mm, Vieira. Should you really have sent Tompkins back out there on a yellow card? Like, there's there's little in-game things that Vieira could have done better, to be honest. But um, yeah, the Mitchell one, I've got no complaints about. Uh, the Tompkins one was was ridiculous, personally. Do you think? Because of course, defensively um, against Chelsea, there's a few question marks. Yeah. Lloyd Kelly has just come back after a long injury. Um, Senesi. Didn't go with Argentina to the World Cup. You know, might feel a little bit hard done by. And of course, we'll be gutted now, considering what Argentina have done out there. But do you think that somebody like Zaha um, and Edwards can actually get through the Bournemouth defence? And well, do you see any issues with that? Well, first, we need to make sure we start Edward. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this, this playing Wolf up top thing, it, for me personally, it doesn't work and such. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Vieira sees something, for, he's a gaffer, I can't really complain about it too tough. Like, it, that's what he's getting paid the big bucks for. But 
just on a personal standpoint, I think Edward links up the play a lot better. He's a lot physically stronger as well. And he can finish. He can finish as well. So, um, and where you say that, obviously, your midfield is a strength. I think we can get at your fullbacks if we're just, if our midfield is strong enough to just withstand whatever you, you throw at us and we get the ball out wide, I think that's the, that's the area we'll have some joy. So then when it comes to your centre-backs, Edward, all he needs to do is focus on getting into the box. And when he does get into the box, he's he's, he's so good in the box. Like, his close control, his one-touch finishing at times and stuff. Um, and that, that's where I think we'll get our joy. So first, yes, we need to start Edward. We have to start him. And secondly, I think we need to attack your fullbacks. It'll be quite interesting because, of course, Zaha, if he plays on the left-hand side, it's probably going to be coming up against Adam Smith, the oldest player in the Bournemouth ranks. Um, might be Ryan Fredericks as well, but, you know, we, we'll see. But I would probably say that we'll go with um, Adam Smith for this game. But considering the battle on that front and that Zaha, he doesn't look lightweight, but he can be a bit lightweight. You know, is that a concern that, you know, he might be overpowered by Smith in this? Um, on the wings, the reason why I say no is because you're more likely to get the ball to feet. And stuff. Mm-hmm. When he plays up top, like, and you saw that against Issa Diop in, in Fulham, <laughs> Diop manhandled him. <laughs> yeah. you know, but, but when, when Wolf plays on the left-hand side, what Vieira allows him to do is he tucks in anyway. And stuff. So he like he kind of he does have like a row in a free kind of free roam, uh, free roll to as well in a sense even from the left hand side. And this is why I don't feel we need to f- force him down the middle. Yeah, you know, personally. So um, I know it worked against Liverpool where he played there, but that's because it was Liverpool. <laughs> you know, we we played yeah. a four five we played a four five one that day. Um, so. Yeah, I think out wide, I think physically it won't be an issue. Um, he's the most far player in the league. I think second might be Grealish. And then it's like Jordan Ayew, which is a surprise. Yeah. Um, so, and that's why I like him out wide, because like I said, he buys fouls. He allows us to just continue to settle. That forces the opposition's back. Uh, when he plays up top, I don't think he holds the ball up well and then we're under to crush. So, yeah, I think he'll be fine as long as he plays on the left-hand side. We'll get to predictions in just two minutes, but of course, this game will be the first at Dean Court. Of course, Bill Foley was here for the Leicester game, but also we'll be having Michael B. Jordan at the game as well on Saturday. Um, it's a little bit of a fairy tale story going from minus 17 to having this Hollywood superstar. Um, but do you think there's going to be a little bit of an added pressure on the Bournemouth side because the Michael's going to be there. Bill's going to be there. There's going to be Nulasaka there as well, um, I believe, who's also another one of our co-owners, plus a lot more members of staff. But do you think that's going to have that added impetus and pressure, or do you think we'll, it's something that the former players should thrive to? It, you know, it could go both ways, because not only, obviously, the new ownership, you think about the fact that it's the first game back, at mm-hmm. Dean Court after the World Cup break. And there'll be that expectancy from, for, especially from the fans, you know. Obviously, your first game was against Chelsea, which is like, you would, you know, I won't say it's so you write them off, but it's mm-hmm. kind of like, you, if they think, ah, oh, I'm not really expected to win that. This game, you'll be thinking, looking at them like, we, sh- we should actually beat them. Like, no one ever like, you should be thinking you should beat us um, because mm-hmm. of how your season's gone and how our season's kind of, it's just so ropey. You know, um, but then on the flip side, like I said, that pressure could be it could be a, it could be a bad thing. You know, um, yeah. it it just all depends on the day. But uh, credit to Gary O'Neill, what he's done since he's took, taken over from Scott Parker, because and I'll put my hands up, I tipped you for relegation straight away. Um, mainly thinking just with investment and so on and so forth, but. You could, you, you've he's done a great job without the investment initially with Gary Neal. He's just taken the players that Scott had initially and just breed confidence in them. And I think you're definitely going to be fine this season, you know. So, um, 
I wish you all the best for Saturday, not too much. <laughs> How do you think it'll go then? <laughs> Our wave will make great. But we need a response. Honestly, if we get, if we respond and draw, I'm happy that we've responded. Because like I said, performances haven't been good. But I am going to say 2-1 Palace. Just. To be honest, I've done the prediction on your show and I'm not going to change from it. I'm not going to bet against my own team. So it's going to be a 2-1 Bournemouth. Um, I think we'll probably go ahead, you equalise, and then I reckon... Reckon that man Jefferson Lerma might get one, uh, <laughs> um, but no, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on, Rich. And before you go, please do tell us where that we can find you. Oh, thank you once again, Craig, and um, guys, keep supporting Craig. Um, amazing content and stuff, and. Um, Thank you so much for reaching out. Uh, you can find me and the rest of the team on Eagle Eyed Football on YouTube. Um, it's Eagle Eyed Ball on Twitter because there weren't enough characters and stuff. And, you know, just type Eagle Eyed Football on, on, on the socials and you should be able to find us. But, um, yeah, thanks again, uh, Craig. It's been a pleasure. Not a problem at all. And thank you again, Rich, for joining us. And all the very, very best for the rest of the season. Of course, after Saturday. Well, yeah. <laughs> best, of, best of luck for the new year, let's say that. Shall we say yeah, that? Well, well, we've got Tottenham <laughs> and Chelsea after you guys. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know. You might get a 2 0 head start against Tottenham um, because that's what they seem to do. <sighs> Can we hold on to 2 0 leads? Actually, we're not too bad at that. Yeah. Give us a two to lead, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been a pleasure, Rick. Thank you so yeah, much. And all the very, it. great best, mate. <laughs> all the best. Take care. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us on this show. Please do remember to hit the like, the subscribe, the bell button, and everything below. Also, please do check out all of our videos as well that we've done and all of our previous interviews. Of course, there has been some sad news today, of course, with the passing of Pele. So, our thoughts and condolences do go out to his family in Brazil. But until next show, thank you for joining us, and we wish you a very happy new year. <laughs>